Welcome to Popcorn Planet. I am Andy Signor. Guys, we have an exclusive, exclusive. A source involved in the Australian perjury case against Amber Heard has come forward and they spoke to our very own Christopher Melcher, who has brought this exclusive. exclusive to us exclusively. Thank you, Christopher, for being here and bringing us this exciting news. All right, so. Let's break this down. I got so many questions. I can't wait to hear more of this. Thank you for filling us in here and giving us giving us a scoop. But you were talking to somebody who is involved. We got to be careful here. It's and obviously speaking on, on in confidence, uh, but gave permission to sort of speak more broadly. A source involved in this Australian perjury case against Amber. Uh, can you sort of uh, explain a little bit more about what's going on? Sure. So I was contacted by an individual and I vetted the person who is involved and has deep knowledge of what's going on with the Australian um, investigation and potential prosecution. And that person has given me uh, permission to talk about some of these points, but I can't reveal the individual's name. Understood. The, um, the up. I was just going to say, the, the first question I was going to ask, what's taking so long? Did you get that information for us, Christopher? Well, that that's there, there were so many questions that I got answered, but uh, that was one of them. Because to us, we're, we're kind of outside looking at this and we're like, what what more do you need, Australian government? You you have the goods here. We know that Amber took the dogs into the country in 2015. Uh, she did not declare them on a form that she signed and presented to the Australian government. The dogs were in fact there against their biosecurity rules, which is a serious violation. She pled guilty um, to violating their laws. She got a lenient sentence because she got an assistant to give a statement that it was the assistant's fault. The assistant later came out and said, no, um, that's not true, I lied. And, you know, so now what more do you need, Australians? Well, we've gone through and, and, and look, looked at this in detail. And now with filling in some blanks from the person who, who um, shared information with me, we can see the steps. And now it makes perfect sense. So you had sent over this like sort of flow chart here. Can you break down? This is sort of really breaks down, which I thought was helpful, like why... It's taking so long. Before we get into more juicy details, this is part of the problem, right? Because there's a lot they need to do to make the request to the other foreign countries to actually follow suit. Yes? That's right. There's a concept called mutual assistance. So here you, you have a crime that occurred in Australia, which they would call perversion of justice, or we would in the U.S. call it usually suborning perjury. So it's asking somebody to lie and submitting lies to a court under oath. So that's the crime that occurred in Australia. Now, the evidence, though, exists outside of Australia with witnesses who reside in the United States and email communications, text messages that occurred within the U.S. The Australians can't just get on a plane and, you know, send a police officer, investigator, prosecutor to the U.S. and start gathering evidence. I mean, we have diplomatic relations that would be offended, you know, if they do something like that and they just don't have the jurisdiction. So a, a lot of these agencies internationally cooperate with each other and it's called mutual assistance. And they have programs that say, hey, we in Australia need evidence that exists of crime in the United States. They contact the FBI and the FBI uh, assists them if, you know, appropriate. So what we have in this flow chart is the steps. And basically, you know, to get through these steps, this has to be serious, uh, you know, in Australia. They're not going to run through these steps and wind up the FBI unless they're they're intending to go forth. And so and what it really starts with the Australians making a decision that they have enough evidence to justify a, an investigation and probable cause to think that a conviction could be secured against Amber. They have to identify the crime, which we just did. And then they would contact the FBI, say, hey, FBI, here are the witnesses we want to interview, the information we want. The FBI then vets that and says, look, we're not going to just go start contacting our, our citizens here or, or residents unless you know we, we see that you have the goods. So they vet it. And that goes through uh, FBI legal. 
So they have to go through all this stuff. They say, hey, we're comfortable helping you uh, Australians. They go then contact the witnesses. They get these statements under oath. They get the emails, communications, whatever shows the scheme and make sure that these are originals, that they haven't been altered. They do a complete investigation. They put a report together. FBI legal signs off on it. They send it to the Australians and the Australians receive it. And they say, OK, now that we've had the FBI gather all this U.S. based evidence for us, do we have enough information where our prosecutor reasonably believes that a conviction could be secured against Amber Heard for perversion of justice? And it's my understanding uh, from this source that if you went through that flow chart, we are pretty much at the end of the flow chart. <laughs> and this is you imagine with the government that all, you know, two governments trying to cooperate overseas. Yep. How many steps are on that chart? Of course, it's going to take time and they're doing their homework and they wouldn't do this unless they were serious about, you know, seeing it to the end. And we are very, very close to the end of this flow chart is my understanding now from what else i've heard as we talked a little bit briefly before this taped there apparently they've all, they've been interviewing a lot of people we're hearing how how seriously do you sense based on who you spoke to that australia is really taking this uh moving forward well you know it's double whammy for them um because first of all uh you know bringing a dog into australia is not just some crime on paper they have these laws are called biosecurity protection laws. They, um, you know, they need to protect their environment to make sure that um, it's not disturbed or ruined by bringing a dog in there, which could really threaten native species. So this is extraordinarily important. And um, so they take that seriously. And because the consequences to Australia is so great, they have to have severe punishment for people who break the law. So that should have occurred in 2015 and 2016 when Amber brought these two dogs and we can go into more back background, but she brought these two dogs and she lied on the arrival form. There's a form when you enter the country, she was on a private jet and it says, do you have dogs? And she says, no, and that was a lie. And so the Australians first are, are should be upset, rightfully upset that she brought these dogs, threatened their biosecurity. OK, fine. They find out about it and they prosecute her. And instead of taking responsibility, she lied again and said, hey, it wasn't my fault. I thought the assistant handled everything for me. So they um, so now that's the perversion of justice. So they not she not only violated biosecurity, then she lied to their court to get a lenient deal and then finally made fun of them. There's in this thread that I did back in May 11th. If you look at my timeline, you'll see May 11th, this whole thing. She makes fun of Barnaby Joyce, who is the guy that he's high up in the government and he was very vocal and attacking really Johnny and Amber about this incident. And and um, Amber was and Johnny had had both made fun of Barnaby Joyce and uh, in what I call a final insult after the prosecution uh, and plea deal that Amber got a new dog and named it Barnaby. So uh, they have this is a triple whammy for them, violated biosecurity, lied to their courts, and then uh, she made fun of the Australians afterwards. So you got to think they got her. They got the sights on her. Well, I, I want to correct something because a lot of I know there's some Amber supporters out there, right, who are like trying to say, well, shouldn't Johnny take responsibility too? Doesn't he? Does he have any liability in this as well? Is, was one of them his dogs? What, what is your response to all that? Yeah, I looked into that because um, those are all legitimate questions. So one of the dogs, uh, you know, I think legally belonged to Johnny, and the other dog legally belonged to Amber. But you know, it was their dogs; they were living together. Um, it's my understanding that Johnny did not want the dogs to travel. Uh, he just, they have staff, just leave the dogs at home. He had no interest in these dogs traveling, but Amber really wanted the dog to go, the dogs to go. And that, uh, one of these assistants was tasked with the responsibility to get the paperwork done, which is a long and expensive process to bring the dogs into Australia. 
that um, there wasn't time, that there were several trips here around this time. Uh, some people have said Johnny was already in Australia, wasn't on the plane with the dogs. That's false. He was absolutely on that plane with Amber and the two dogs. Now, um, the, the timeline, I understand, got moved around because his finger had got caught, you know, cut off um, in this incident with Amber earlier and he missed a lot of time from filming pirates and so they wanted him there earlier so the timeline got messed up and there wasn't enough time to get the dogs cleared amber was informed of that in writing you know it, in, in this thread i have the messages from the assistant saying amber we can't do it there's not right. enough time she acknowledged it but took the dogs anyway and so they had a private jet she, she took the dogs. And the reason why she was prosecuted, not Johnny, is that Amber signed the form and presented it to the Australians on arrival saying we don't have any animals or pets with us. So had Johnny done that, he would have been prosecuted. But she did it. Um, and so and then um, it was discovered through a social media post when somebody had taken these dogs to the vet in country uh that they had the dogs that got out there and the australian officials came knocking to saying you know what's up with these pets and then that uh that's when the prosecution happened the um that hostage video that we're calling it you know this was part of the plea bargain is my understanding that uh to get and uh, a lighter sentence that they would do like a public service announcement the both of them saying you know don't mess with the um, Australia the biosecurity good. laws. Now, Amber apologized in there. Johnny was just kind of present. He didn't apologize. And um, the thought of the Australians uh, was that this would help bring awareness to the importance of the biosecurity law. But then everyone just basically made fun of the video because it was so horrible, making them look even worse. Right. And just to be clear here, as because Barnaby Joyce, the actual Australian um, uh, what is he now? I forget. He's the, the Minister of Agriculture during during this happened, and now he's a politician, I guess. But he did an interview with Law and Crime recently, and, and I, I showed the clip early. But another thing, just like, you know, like another example, rabies. We don't have rabies in Australia. A lot of people go bushwhacking. I've got wild dogs. I'm a farmer. Uh, and you know it could change the whole complexion of how our nation would run. We're very aware of what happens, in our, and there's incursions of our rabies and or screw fly or the big one we're watching is for foot and mouth. So we've come down like a ton of bricks and people who would decimate our regional economies, change our standard our way we live in our nation and force up the cost of living. We're not going to let movie stars just come in, even though they've been the sexiest man alive twice to come into our nation and break the laws. Then why don't we just break the laws for everybody? It's time they book it off. So uh, look, this was a serious thing. They, they Amber, it seems based on all the exchanges we had, you know, that you, that we've seen through the assistance and the emails, she was the one, not Johnny. She was the one trying to just, you know, get away with this and lie about it and just sort of throw this under the rug. It's kind of, it's, it's scary. It's perjury. And it's yet another example. So I don't understand why people don't use this as a way to knock out Amber's, you know, credibility. Right. The, the question, though, I have for you, Christopher, is how likely is it that Australia is actually going to, you know, you know, make her serve the time? Could they extradite her? Could this actually happen? Or is she just going to get charged in Australia and then she just avoids the, the continent altogether and nothing ever happens? Did your source give you any insight on that? Yeah, the, the, a little bit. And so basically, if if the Australians bring uh, new criminal charges against her for this perversion of justice, um, then they would have to you know, give her notice that she has uh, been charged and she would have to make a decision at that point. Like, is she going to go back to Australia to face those charges? Is she just going to basically ignore it and say, like, hey, you know, I'm not going to Australia again, uh, so I don't care if what you guys charge or have pending charges against me? That would be extraordinarily risky. So I think most lawyers would advise her to, hey, you got to go and address these charges because if she were to ignore them, uh, then the case would proceed without her. She would be convicted potentially and then have, you know, international warrant for her arrest. And um, they also could extradite her. Uh, that, that is 
allowed. Now, that's an extraordinary remedy. A lot of times we don't see extraditions, meaning that we would have one country go, you know, like Australia, into the United States, ask for this cooperation, have the, the U.S. officials take custody of the person and send them um, back. That, that's extraordinary, but it would be available for this charge, and they may do that. Um, or what, what happens, though, in many cases is that the person will cooperate because they don't want to face the risk of a trial in absentia, meaning in their absence and having um, all of this hanging over their head. We saw that with Kevin Spacey in um, London High Court. He was charged out there uh, about a month ago and he elected to go. And uh, in person, he was arraigned, and the judge allowed him, uh, I think, to be released without bail, bail or nominal bail pending trial. So, uh, and he has very good representation. Um, so I would imagine that she would be in a very difficult bind, and she might cooperate and go there. And if she didn't, they, they could potentially extradite her. So this is big news. So basically, what we're, we're, we're understanding now why it's taken so long but that they are truly taking this very seriously. And it sounds like Amber really does need to worry and that this could actually, we could start hearing some actual things in the coming weeks, hopefully it seems. Uh, any other final sort of thoughts or things to add based on what we've heard from this new source? Well, you know, the thing is, is that Amber um, did all these things, but also placed the, do the dogs in jeopardy. Uh, she was warned that the Australians would euthanize, you know, these animals, if they were f illegally brought into the country, that is a consequence, a known consequence that, that the Australians could do. And so she brought these dogs into the country knowing that was a risk. So I don't think she ever really cared about these dogs. These were more accessories to her. It was fashionable to have these little dogs around with her. And to me, that, that's one of, one of the great offenses here. And, and then not to take responsibility. We've seen consistently with Amber that she blames everybody else. I mean, if you take this story as its own little microcosm and say, okay, maybe you can blame the assistant. You can blame Johnny. You can blame the Australians. You can do all this stuff. But when you add every other kind of vignette or story around Amber, it's the same thing. It's not my fault. I didn't understand. I was set up. This is all Johnny's fault. And it just doesn't sell. So um, she, I think, you know, has, has faced some serious consequences in Virginia, but that's money that she doesn't have. <laughs> you know, it's not a whole lot to say. You got to pay $10.35 million to a guy when you don't have $10.35 million. You know, that's not much of a consequence, honestly. Here, this is serious. This is criminal, potentially jail time. So um, th this, this would be, if I, if, if I were her or advising her, much more concerned about a criminal prosecution than some money judgment. And just the perjury charges alone go against everything we've heard in, all, in UK now, which there's now perjury charges. There's appeals now actually being thought potentially pushed through because of all this. And again, all this perjury, all this lying, all this credibility issues. Again, I don't understand why we're still out there with some out, mainstream media outlets and reporters still defending this woman. It blows my mind. Uh, but I really appreciate this insight. We will get you more from this source. And if anybody else out there can confirm themselves privately to either Christopher or I, we will help get the word out there. We want to get to the truth and we want to keep you guys updated. So I'm really grateful to this source for coming forward to Christopher. Thank you to whoever you were. I appreciate it. And make sure you go follow Christopher Melcher over on Twitter at CA underscore divorce for more uh, Twitter threads and information. Uh, Christopher, always a pleasure talk to you thank you for bringing this here go give them a follow will you guys and make sure if you haven't already hit that subscribe button here too hit the bell for all alerts smash the like button and leave a comment down below we may not be live today uh, i gave you a special one today uh we may get some more content soon but bear with me hit the subscribe stay tuned we'll be back with more content soon here on popcorn planet thanks for watching everybody